If you're learning about Hope Summers, you're going to read two words a lot. Mutant, Messiah. Hope Summers is a season pass card for the March 2024 season of Marvel Snap, the Avengers vs. X-Men season, which makes sense because she's the main character in that story. As they do in all of these videos, for people that want to learn more about the comics, be you Marvel Snap players or not, we're just going to talk about Hope Summers a little bit. What does she do? What are her powers? And then how do those relate to her Marvel Snap card? So Hope Summers shows up for the first time in the 2000s, in the aftermath, very important, of the No More Mutants event. So Scarlet Witch at the end of House of M said No More Mutants and used her hex magic to depower all but 200-ish mutants. So almost all of them turned back into normal person. Most of the main characters stayed mutants, but a lot of the other characters, kids at the schools, other mutants in the world just became normal humans again. And very important, no new mutants were born. So for a little while, there were no more mutants, but the X-Men still existed. They were still a school. They were taking care of the 200 or so mutants on the planet, some of them being students at the time. And they were always looking, hey, is there a new mutant out there? Are we going to get any more mutants? Probably not, but uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye out. Well, one day, Cerebra, the Cerebro machine, exploded. And that's because it picked up on the mutant signature of the first mutant born since what is known as the Decimation. And this takes place in the Messiah Complex storyline. The issue specifically that Hope first appears in is issue 205. It's written by Mike Carey, with art by Chris Bacciallo, Tim Townsend, Brian Reber, and Corey Petit. It's very funny to me that in the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer, Deadpool refers to himself as Mutant Jesus, because that's what Hope Summers is. I mean, a lot of characters are Mutant Jesus. You could say the Phoenix, the original Phoenix, Jean Grey is Mutant Jesus because she dies and comes back. You could say that Nate Grey, the character X-Man that just is Mutant Jesus is Mutant Jesus because he's Mutant Jesus. You could say that Exodus is Mutant Jesus. But I would say Hope Summers is known as the Mutant Messiah. She is the mutant that is going to save all of mutant kind. There's a big fight over her between all the characters that you would expect would be interested in her. Specifically, the X-Men, obviously, but then Mr. Sinister. And you're thinking, well, Hope Summers, that makes sense. He loves the Summers. He loves Scott and Jean and all of those descendants of theirs. So, of course, he would be interested in Hope Summers. Well, first, a uh, little thing that's important to note here. Hope Summers is not related to Scott or Jean or any of them. She's born to just a normal woman. I think we've seen like one or two pictures of her in all of the comics. She doesn't matter. But after she was born, she disappeared. And everybody's trying to figure out where'd she go, who had her. And it turns out the character that got her was Cable. So Cable took it upon himself to protect this new baby, this mutant Messiah. So Messiah Complex, this big story where everybody's trying to figure out where she is. Bishop is the antagonist for this because Bishop believes that Hope Summers is going to cause the bad future that Bishop came from. But eventually what Cable does to solve this problem is he takes this baby into the far future and raises her himself. So this baby is raised by Cable, but she's not related to Cable. She's just his adopted daughter. And for a while, he didn't even call her a name. There was no name until Cable's then wife in the future died. Her name was Hope, so they decided to name Hope Hope after the mother. But you would be forgiven for assuming that this character, Hope Summers, is related to Jean Grey and Scott Summers. The same way the characters like Rachel and Nathan are related to Jean and Scott. Especially because she's got red hair, she's got incredible amounts of mutant power, and one of those mutant powers that can kind of do anything, and she's related to the Phoenix in some way. It takes a while for that part to materialize, but if you'd like myself join on this story in the Avengers vs. X-Men days, you see this character, she's being trained by Cable, she's kind of from the future, she's got red hair, she's gonna get the Phoenix Force, her last name Summers, you would just assume, oh, this is, I guess, Scott and Jean's daughter from an alternate timeline, or maybe she is the different Scott or different Jean's daughter, maybe as a result of cloning or something like that. Nope, not related, just a coincidence. So Cable and Hope hop around time for a while, but eventually, Hope grows up to become around, I would say 13 maybe is the age that we have, like the standard Hope age. She is a high school aged kid, but she's been trained for her whole life to be a super soldier. I would say the character that Hope Summers most reminds me of, or at least one of the characters she very much reminds me of, is Terminator 2 Sarah Connor. Obviously a much younger version of Terminator 2 Sarah Connor, but like you see this person walk down the street and you're like, oh, it's just a, you know, it's a normal person. And then they like whip out a gun they had hidden behind them and do a backflip and kick a robot's head off or something. Like that's the level of badass you would expect from Hope Summers. She's a weapons expert. She can use all kinds of guns. She has a special Psy scimitar that she can use to amplify her psychic powers. She also is trained in all kinds of martial arts and survival. She can build stuff as she needs it. She's the ultimate doomsday prepper. So eventually 
Hope Summers makes it back to the present day and eventually being 13 years of her life, but very little time passing relative to that in Marvel Comics. So Messiah Complex, the story of finding Hope Summers and then Cable raising Hope Summers, first big Hope Summers story. Second big Hope Summers story, which comes after all of this time travel stuff now she's in the present day, is the five lights of Hope Summers. I mean, technically I think there's seven lights, but the five are like core characters that she hangs out with because one of the things that Hope Summers can do is she can regulate mutant power. She has the ability to like go around and if you're mutant powers, you know, go crazy or make it a big fireball or something. She can kind of calm you down and make it so that your power is manageable. It's a mutant power she has the same way that like Leech can turn people's mutant abilities off. Although some, I guess this is different sometimes. I feel like Leech, when Leech does it, it's not as deliberate. He doesn't like look at you and decide. It's just like if you're around Leech, you get depowered. I don't know. That's the movie though. How does he work in the comics? I can't remember. But because Hope is the best at this, she has an incredible amount of control over this power. So the lights are mutant teenagers that powers activate that Hope has to protect. So it's Hope's responsibility to find them, help them regulate their powers, and then because of like a special bond she has with them, they join up with her and kind of become her disciples. She gives them not only better control over their powers, but they also, uh, they've said this, feel differently around her. Like it's just how she works. So the five characters are Transonic, who can fly, Velocidad, very fast, Oh yeah, she can do hot and cold. Taeon, who's basically like a caveman. He's he's more of like a dog, like a feral kid, but he listens to hope and has super strength and stuff like that. And then Kenji, who is basically Akira. There's two other lights that are born. One of them is a fetus that has psychic powers, and one of them is a boy whose skin melts. But those are the core five members of the lights. And these guys hang out with Hope. She trains them to be this team of kind of new mutants and they were designed to sort of be like the regular X-Men. Transonic's a little bit like Angel, both can fly. You have Taeon the dog boy and Beast, you have Oyo and Iceman, and you have Kenji and Jean Grey. Like their powers are supposed to be kind of similar, although obviously they're not that similar and there's no Cyclops, there's a speedster. Eventually Oyo has to leave the team and is replaced by Pixie, a character that we will talk about later because she is also a big part of this season of Marvel Snap. And this is the story with Hope for a little bit. She tries to train the Five Lights to become her like mutant team slash army slash best friends or whatever. So Hope and Light story two. Story three, the big one, Avengers vs X-Men. The Phoenix shows up again, and it's gonna come for somebody, and I don't remember why, but pretty much everybody's like, oh, it's Hope Summers. Hope Summers is gonna get the Phoenix, she has been prophesized to save mutant kind, and this is how she's gonna take the Phoenix Force and use it to rejuvenate mutant kind. At least that's what Cyclops and the X-Men think. The Avengers think she's gonna use it to destroy the world or whatever, you know. Then to be fair, the track record with people trying to use the Phoenix to do anything has been all over the place. Like sometimes you can kind of control it, but then you go Dark Phoenix. So I understand why the members of the Avengers are like, this is very dangerous. It causes a big fight between the Avengers and the X-Men. Hope does not want to get the Phoenix Force. She just wants to get away from all this and she runs away. Nobody can find her. Wolverine manages to catch her, takes her to the moon. It's a big trap. The Avengers are there, the X-Men are there. They all fight. And then the Phoenix Force shows up, gets punched by Iron Man and splits up into five pieces. But it doesn't go to Hope because Hope doesn't want it. It goes to Cyclops, Emma Frost, Namor, Magic, and Colossus. And they become the Phoenix Five. They use the Phoenix Force to fix everything. They all become tyrants. It's a whole big disaster. They fight each other for power. At the same time, the Avengers go to Kun Lun and Scarlet Witch brings Hope to Kun Lun with them. So they train Hope Summers so that she can master the Phoenix Force. They train her in the ways of the Iron Fist. They train her in the ways of just like being a good soldier because she learns from everybody she learns from iron fist but she also learns from spider-man and she learns from scarlet witch characters that all the x-men at this point hate like she caused their most recent mutant genocide basically the people didn't all die but the mutant powers all disappeared like the mutants barely exist anymore and it's all her fault so all the mutants are incredibly skeptical of anything related to scarlet witch but scarlet witch feels very guilty about this she's like no no, no i want to help i want to fix everything hope summers now let's talk about her powers because we haven't talked about her other power her most important power Hope Summers has the power to borrow mutant abilities. Now this is going to seem a little bit redundant because we have a couple of mutants that already do something kind of like that. First of all, obviously Rogue. Rogue touches you, steals some of your life force, and is able to mimic your ability. She also gets some of your memories and that fades away over time. You also have a character named Sync, who for the longest time, 
even I was like, what is the difference between Sink and Hope Summers? Like, obviously, she is a better version of whatever this is. But, like, it seems like what Sink's doing is basically when Sink is near you, he can kind of copy your powers, create his aura, and he uses your powers while you're around. He can copy multiple powers at once, I believe. And, you know, a lot of these characters have existed for a while. Their powers have kind of been stretched up to the upper limit. So sometimes he can hold on to a power even if he leaves your vicinity. Hope Summers has the best version of this power, which is she can borrow powers from mutants she is near. A couple differences between her and the rest of these guys. Unlike Rogue, she does not need to hurt you. She does not need to touch you. She just has to be around you. She can kind of sense your power. She can borrow it. You get to keep it and she can use it. She also has full mastery over the power. So let's say you're Nightcrawler and Rogue takes your Nightcrawler power. The good chance she's just going to teleport around for a while, try to figure out how it works. Hope gets Nightcrawler power. She's immediately doing it as well as Nightcrawler's ever done it. Also, and this is something I'm pretty sure Sync can't do, she can just crank all the powers up to 11. Like a lot of the mutants in X-Men have mental blocks that prevent them from using their power to their fullest ability usually because it will be dangerous or something like that. So Hope is able to bypass those and turn into basically the ultimate version of any mutant. Also, Hope borrows powers and they do fade away over time. Also, if she uses a lot of power, she'll wear herself out, but she doesn't always need to be near someone. She can grab the power and take it. It will fade away if she's, you know, much further from them. And over time it fades away. And if she uses lots and lots of power, she'll also lose their power. But like, basically you just dip Hope into a group of like four mutants. She can come out with all their powers and be really awesome for like a second if she wants to. That's how they defeated the fear itself version of the Juggernaut. Hope just took a bunch of powers. Like she took like Rock Slide, Pixie, Magneto, a couple of others, and just turned into like this ultimate version of all of them and ripped the Juggernaut's helmet off. It was very cool. But like, she's the only person that could do that. Sink could not do that. He does not have that level of power. So Hope trained to use the Iron Fist power to master her power so that she could absorb the Phoenix Force and control it. She also trained with the Scarlet Witch, who's another character who understands what a reality bending super being is like, like what it's like to have that level of power, even though it's not the quite the same thing as the Phoenix Force. Eventually, spoilers for Avengers vs. X-Men, a book that I like and like reread recently, I was like, this is a fun book. I like it moves pretty quickly. You know, the Phoenix Five exists by like book five or six out of 12, I think. And it's an easier read than you'd expect because a lot of it is big splash pages of everybody fighting each other. But Scott gets all the powers, goes full dark Phoenix. Hope takes the Phoenix Force from him and then with the help of Wanda, destroys the Phoenix. There's no more Phoenix and the Phoenix goes away. All of its powers get spread around the earth. And because the Phoenix is a force of destruction, but also a force of life, it brings all the mutants back. So the 200 or so mutants become thousands and thousands of mutants like it used to be. More people are getting powers. It's a whole thing. It's great. It's, it's exactly what everybody wanted. So I would say Avengers vs. X-Men, the most significant Hope story, because this is a humongous comic-wide event where every character is like, where's Hope Summers? We need Hope Summers to solve this problem. The most recent significant thing she's done is everything she's done on Krakoa. That because Hope Summers can copy mutant powers and also help mutants better use their own power, she is part of what is called in Marvel a circuit, which is when a bunch of X-Men mutants, I, I guess it's only mutants, and it yeah, hypothetically could be other characters, use their powers together to do something new. So the first example of a circuit is the fastball special. A strong character like Colossus or Strong Guy tosses Wolverine and it's like two mutant powers being used together. There's a bunch of other versions of this, but the most significant one was the five, which was Gold Ball, Elixir, Tempest, and I don't call him Gold Ball, he was Egg then, but Egg, Elixir, Tempest, Proteus, and Hope. Egg was able to create like life. He created these little eggs that people could be grown from. We didn't know that was what he did. We thought his name was Gold Balls and he just made Gold Balls, but it turns out that's what he did. So Proteus would warp reality to make the eggs viable. They put some DNA that Professor X and Mr. Sinister and all these characters had been collecting over time. Elixir was able to give the eggs life. Tempest aged the eggs up and then the eggs were born as people and Hope Summers was holding this whole thing together. And with this power, the X-Men were able to resurrect any mutant who died, including ones that died like yesterday. They would have them go on a mission and then they'd explode. Then they'd just make them again. And that was all Hope Summers was like the leader of that team. The Hope Summers is always because of like the five and the lights, the center of these very important, very semi-religious mutant things. And that's why Exodus, one of the members of the Quiet Council on Krakoa, a mutant with extreme telekinetic abilities, 
views Hope as a god and sort of worships her. And in-universe, plenty of people do this, but Exodus is the most known for it. So that's basically Hope's power. She's never been in the movies, except apparently Hope Summers is the child from Deadpool 2 that Cable is trying to protect. So she had the bear that got all burnt up. Now, she was living with Cable and Cable's wife in like a house having a quiet life and was killed by fire fists or whatever that hot hands whatever that character ended up being called russell i guess let's say russell she dies in that story so i wouldn't say while that character technically is called hope she doesn't have any mutant powers as far as we know she doesn't really do anything hope summers the thing with her in the movies and, and shows is like we have to get kind of far into these stories before you can start doing hope summer stuff now i think if they wanted to make an x-men cartoon where all the x-men already existed and then hope summer shows up that would be fine like that would make sense you could do a lot of younger x-men you know have the five have the academy x kids all be like the focus of this but you know we have to reboot every proper listen i can't complain that much because i bought all the toys but i do kind of wish we got a show like that and i do think hope could be like a solid season two or season three arc of like an academy x show because those characters did sync up with messiah complex they were all around that same time in marvel snap hope summers is a three cost four power card and her card text says after you play a card here you get plus one energy next turn so you put her in a lane the same way that you would put angela in a lane and every time you add another card to that lane you get an extra energy next turn. Originally, I assumed the reason this card worked this way was because in the comics, Hope can bring out mutant abilities and like help mutants be their best self. So if you're on the same team as Hope, you could be really strong. And by, you know, that logic, if you're in the same space as Hope, like if you are putting cards with Hope, things are gonna get better, you're gonna have more energy, you're gonna be able to summon more cards. Apparently, and I, I don't hate this next one either, but the explanation that Ben Brode gave in the video that they released explaining everything was that because characters are looking for Hope Summers, because everybody's trying to find her, and especially in Avengers vs. X-Men, everybody's trying to work with her to solve the problem, the faster your characters are able to be in the same space as Hope, the more power you get. So I get that. I think that's fine. Like I think as far as a way to you know use this card, that that's reasonable it doesn't factor as much into her mutant power directly but she's a character who gives you the opportunities for big plays by maybe putting you know if like if you play a hope summers and people shouldn't do this i don't want to see this i'm sure people will do this so you can play hope summers yellow jacket and wasp on three and then you'll get two extra energy from both of those guys and then on four you'll have four energy you can play galactus on four that'd be a turn four galactus with Hope Summers and two cards that cost zero that are not that impressive. So like that's some crazy stuff that you can do with Hope Summers. She she fits into ramp decks, she kind of fits into bounce decks. Bounce decks, I guess, I'm trying to think of characters that she knows who she synergizes well with. When you say she synergizes particularly well with Cyclops uh, or Cable or Jean, Scarlet Witch a little bit, right? Changing the location, I guess can be beneficial for Hope Summers. She synergizes with, ooh, like Dazzler. She's good with Dazzler because hypothetically you're gonna fill up that spot on the board. Characters like Kitty, who, I mean, I'm sure she's interacted with in the past. None of the other members of the five or her lights besides Pixie, who's about to join, are in Marvel Snap, so she can't synergize well with any of them. She doesn't synergize, she synergizes poorly with Sinister because Sinister takes up a spot, but she would not get the extra energy from him. So like, he's a bad guy. Synergizes pretty well with Bishop. Funny enough, because of a bounce deck. Synergize as well with Beast and X-Men, bounce deck. Apparently, Synergize is pretty well with Captain America. I mean, like, as well as Captain America can synergize with anyone. But again, this is, you're going to have a location that is full. Like, by the end of this game, if you've not used every spot in the Hope Summer's location, then what are you doing? So that's like maximum power, Captain America. Synergizes kind of well with Iron Man. Wouldn't say she synergizes. Ooh, she synergizes actually pretty well with Iron Fist. I actually like that, because you can play Hope. Play Iron Fist, then you play somebody else on Hope's spot. Iron Fist bumps that character off, so now you have two spots. So yeah, the Iron Fist, Iron Fist synergy is nice. And she synergizes, interestingly, uh, with Professor Xavier, because Professor Xavier can be used to lock down that lane in an emergency. Like, a lot of the X-Men characters can be used to make her life difficult. Like Storm, you can close down that lane, so your opponent cannot do a lot of stuff with Hope Summers. Same goes for Professor X. I'm sure there's other ones I'm forgetting, but characters that are in those stories that she's from i'd say those are some of the most significant ones that she deals with a lot 
doesn't synergize particularly well with the Phoenix Force either, which isn't, you know, she doesn't really like synergizing well with the Phoenix Force, so why would she? Synergizes pretty well with the Spider characters, like Spider-Man, a character she spends time with in Avengers vs. X-Men. You play Spider-Man on that space, Spider-Man moves away from that space, you still get the extra energy. So, you know what, maybe, I like, I don't think all of the Spider characters are going to work really well there, because, like, Silk wouldn't be great, because she might take up the last spot there, but a character like Spider-Man be pretty useful there. And there's probably like eight I'm forgetting. But you know, that's Hope Summers. Overall, I think she's an important character who has only been introduced in the last like, you know, less than 20 years. She's part of a couple big stories. If you want to read something of hers, I would say read Avengers vs. X-Men. It's a good Hope Summers book. The Psych Complex is good, but you don't get a ton of like who this character actually is. If you want to learn more about Hope Summers in the Five Lights, I would say Generation Hope. Not a bad book to do that and house of x powers of x like a lot of see a lot of the things with hoxbox and the krakoan age is she's doing a lot of stuff right what hope summers does is important and there's plenty of moments in some of the big fights where she has like big moments but she doesn't play as big a role as other characters because you kind of figure for most of the book she's busy doing resurrection stuff because that is her job so yeah I'm gonna do these for the rest of the mutants. I said I was gonna do one for Ebony Maw. Here's what happened with Ebony Maw. I was gonna do it. I was feeling good, because I was like, all right, I've read all the books with all these guys, so let's do it. And then I learned that in the Thanos series, you it's led, like the third volume of the Thanos books, led by pretty much a young Ebony Maw. And I was like, oh, well, I don't know as much about this guy as I thought I did. I need to read those books. So I've read them, but now it's like, I should probably do the Hope Summers thing. I'll probably make an Ebony Maw addendum video because his backstory isn't that complicated. I do think they should change his card to do something different because I think there's more fun things you can do with him. Uh, and I might put that with my How to Fix Thanos video because I've wanted to do that for a while. Talk about how Thanos as a card doesn't work. Uh, obviously, the Infinity Stones work great and the idea that Thanos gives the Infinity Stones is awesome. But on the other hand, nobody plays Thanos. It's the most boring part of Thanos. So I've had a couple of thoughts about like what you could do with him. I'm also going to focus on the other Avengers X-Men characters like Pixie, Cannonball on the X-Men side, and then Mockingbird and War Machine on the Avengers side. Let's do this. All right, the two locations. I'll knock these out real quick. Krakoa. Krakoa is in the original like X-Men comics back in the day, a sentient island that the X-Men fought. That was its whole deal for a while. Uh, the X-Men got trapped there and other X-Men had to go rescue them. And I don't think there were a ton of Krakoa developments. This wasn't always like the main place where the X-Men would live. But in the Hawks Pox, Jonathan Hickman, a House of X, Powers of X relaunch from like the early 2020s. When did that? I think it was 2020, maybe 2019. The mutants colonized Krakoa. I would I guess you, it's hard to say colonized because they worked with the mutant who could talk to Krakoa and be like, hey, can we live there? And Krakoa was like, all right. So it was it was a mutual thing. But like Krakoa was the living island uh, that would give the mutants everything they need. They could use Krakoa and Gates for teleportation. It was very handy. The location itself, your first play here adds its power to the top of your deck. So I guess hypothetically, let's like work this out. Let's say you played thing, you know, a four six on Krakoa. And the card that you had coming up next was She-Hulk in your decks, a six ten. So I assume that means once you play Thing on Krakoa, your She-Hulk now becomes a 616, I think is the way to do it. So I, I, I imagine the way you would want to do it is you would want to play powerful cards on Krakoa early. So characters like Cull or Sentry or something like that, and then farm that power out in you know the next turn or two. I imagine the thought process with this, well, A, Krakoa used to be a kind of mini ego and everyone hated that because it wasn't very fun. But what they've done, I think, is changed it to a version of the island where it does kind of make every mutant better. Living on Krakoa not only like makes you happier, but it is just like a paradise for mutants. So I could see that being like, you know, if you're putting a lot of cards out and you're playing really strong cards, they will make other cards stronger. I imagine that's what they're thinking with the Krakoa. And if that's the case, sure, that feels right. So Utopia is the other location for this season. Utopia was a new kind of base of operations place for the mutants to live. It was created, I believe, based on like they took Asteroid M and remade it as an island in San Francisco uh, where all the mutants could live, where it was kind of like their sovereign mutant city. I think it's a clever thing in the game because what they've chosen to do with that location is three or four cards cost one less, which makes sense because Asteroid M, the space base that Magneto made, 
that Utopia is based on is the location in Snap, and it pulls three and four cost cards to it. So it's like related to three and four cost cards. In the Asteroid M case, that's because Magneto, who lives there, also pulls three and four cost cards to himself. So it's almost like a mini Magneto. I think what's interesting about Utopia is it makes it easier to play three and four cost cards. But like, what does that mean? Most of the X-Men, not all, but most, especially a lot of the main like core X-Men and especially some of the interesting Utopia X-Men, the, the mutants that actually live down Utopia, Scott, Emma Frost, Storm, Magic, are all somewhere between three and four cost cards. I don't think that this is incredibly consistent. Beast, three or four cost card. Namor is, like Jean is, but she's, she wasn't on Utopia. Rogue and Gambit, three costs. Miss Marvel, four cost. Obviously she didn't live there. Mystique, three cost. So yeah. A lot of the Marvel Snap cards just in general are three and four cost cards, but a lot of the very important mutants are three and four cost cards. So if you're playing a lot of mutants, if you've got a handful of X-Men and Utopia comes up, that's good because now they all are a little cheaper. I think that's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, I, I do think there's a lot of teams like the X-Men and like the Fantastic Four where they don't synergize incredibly well together. Like obviously like the Guardians of the Galaxy, right? They all have the same power, at least the same kind of ethos for creating those cards. Whereas with these guys, it's like, I don't know, man, you can kind of make Scott and Gene work together, but like nobody does. Uh, you know, you can kind of get something out of Rogue and Gambit working together, but like they're not that incredible together. Like if there's like a Kyra, Rogue can steal that and then Gambit can kill. But in general, it doesn't seem like this kind of thing where the X-Men were built from the ground up with this design in mind the same way that some other teams were however it does seem like if they are all almost three or four cost cards then you could put these guys in one location if it's three and four cost location that works obviously hope summers also a three or four cost card either way those are the two locations well Kirk, uh, Kirko is an older like it's been around for a while and the same is true of asteroid m the location but utopia showed up right around the same time as hope summer so like late 2000s. Krakoa as the sentient island where the X-Men live and has become their like nation where they are all alive and having a great time. That is a very recent development. So both of these locations come from recent X-Men comics. Uh, that's cool. Now I wish Colossus was a three cost because then you know all the Phoenix five would be three or fours but he's a two cost. I don't think they should bump him up because you know what are you gonna do? I mean I guess you could make Colossus a three or four. You make Colossus a three cost. Okay. This is like an extra little thing. Uh, make classes a three cost and make his power so no cards in that location on your side of the field can be moved. So it's like not only is Colossus immovable, he protects other cards there. So that way it's like now he's a three cost and that gives him a little bit of extra benefit so that you can help, you know, deal with uh, some of the really annoying decks that I have played. I don't want to pretend that I'm better than Toxic Mobster, but then he'll protect you from those cards. Also, I do want to say uh, ben Brode, the people at Marvel Snap, I do think this this recent group, you explained all of the characters and their powers in that video and like why you made the cards work the way they did. In a way, with all of them, I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. That makes sense. It's pretty like, you know, not all of them are like the most obvious thing in the world. Like War Machine, he's like a bodyguard. He's a bodyguard's bodyguard. So, you know, he could escort people. I'm like, yeah, that's 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 solid. Uh, and I like that you guys did that. And I like that it does feel like, especially because this event is so focused on a comic, that Marvel Snap is going to help introduce people to comics. That would be cool. I hope that happens. So thank you all for watching this. If you enjoyed this video, recommend it to your friends, recommend it to people play Marvel Snap, people read comics on all the, you know, forums and stuff like that where people talk about this thing. And follow me on Twitter. I'm Nando V Movies on Twitter. I have a podcast called Mostly Nitpicking. That's all I've got. I'll see you guys later. Take care.